candidates forum for the 46 congressional district candidates and our first district supervisory candidates. I uh, okay. just want to take a minute and um, acknowledge our, our sponsors tonight, the Anaheim Chamber of Commerce Connected Council, Fountain Valley Chamber of Commerce, Garden Grove Chamber, Vietnamese Chamber, Santa Ana College, and Santa Ana uh, Chamber of Commerce. And uh, I'm uh, pleased to have uh, those colleagues. I'm Dave L.A., President and CEO of the Santa Ana Chamber of Commerce here in our city, which is great, and we're in our uh, college as well. And we want to thank you for coming tonight. Thank you, our candidates, for coming. At this time, I'd like to turn it over to Mark Clough, who will be our moderator tonight. Mark? Thank you, and uh, good evening. And again, uh, I would like to thank uh, Santa Ana College for hosting, you know, allowing us to host this event here this evening. Uh, if you may or may not know, Santa Ana College is celebrating 100 years the fourth oldest community college in the state of California. And this is a, a great year for that for some of the college for the district. Um, I'd like to do just a little housekeeping before we get underway here. First of all, if you would please turn off all your cell phones. I uh, really don't want anybody to be disturbing our, our former candidates. Uh, we'd like to have you refrain from any kind of cheering or jeering or anything of that nature. Uh, please give respect to our candidates this evening. Uh, in addition to that, we have handed out some index cards, if you would. Uh, there will be a person, uh, several people coming around to pick up those index cards if you haven't filled them out yet, please do so. We've also given you a form that you can fill out at the end of the event to give us a little bit of critique and feedback on the event itself. Um, with that, what I'd like to do is uh, start out by saying that, um, as Dave mentioned, this, this event has been supported by the Chamber of Commerce and the districts that are being contested at this moment. The focus, therefore, tonight will be on economic development, workforce development, jobs, and the overall health of our, of our local economy. Tonight's questions were gathered from neighborhood associations and business organizations from the contested districts. We have approximately six questions for each tonight, and we will ask as many as we can. In addition, we're also going to take some of the questions from the audience and ask them at the time allots. As far as uh, timekeeping goes, each candidate will have two minutes for an opening statement. And then for each question, we'll allow one minute. But for certain questions, due to the complexity of them, we may allow two minutes. And then we'll have one minute of a wrap up by each of the candidates. So with that, I'd like to have, I'd like to introduce the candidates for the first Congressional District, the first uh, supervisor district. I'm sorry. Uh, you want to be a congressman? You're good. Um, we have Steve Rocco. Could you please uh, join us on the stage? Andrew Doe. And Bob Bowie. Since 2014, and 
I'm running for District 1 because I believe District 1 is heading in the wrong direction. District 1 is the poorest district in the uh, county, and uh, we are facing many issues from animal uh, services to uh, public transportation to public health, and uh, as well as to uh, public safety. We have prisoner escaping the uh, criminal escaping the prison uh, without uh, us knowing about it for more than 10 hours. And uh, our transportation has been cutting bus services while the county is spending uh, you know, money to um, promote that uh, festival at the Miles Square Park. I would like to focus on improving the economy for small business in District 1. And I would like to focus on homelessness as well as uh, affordable housing for the seniors and the low income. Thank you. Andrew, please. Thank you. I want to thank uh, the organizers for the uh, opportunity to speak tonight. And I welcome everyone and hope everyone turn out to vote on June 7th. In the short 14 months that I've been uh, county supervisor for the first district, I am proud to have earned the trust of my fellow colleagues on the Board of Supervisors. You have allowed me to take the leadership positions on many important issues in the county of Orange. I'm going to cite three in particular. One is on public safety. I have worked to increase the budget for the Sheriff Department by $24 million in response to the increase in crime in the last couple of years. We have seen since the realignment of state prisoners being released out to local jail through AB 109 and also the passage of Prop 47 in 2014, there's been a dramatic increase in crime in our communities. And I've worked hard to increase funding for the Sheriff Department as well as Probation Department to work with the local police department in order to supervise the prisoner, the inmate that had been released from state prison down to our local jail. Two is I proposed and the board adopted unanimously the creation of a homeless star to work to coordinate care from all of the county departments in order to holistically help the homeless individuals that we have in our community. We have to change the way we think how we administer help to people who are in need of help. We cannot function in the old model of we create the bureaucracy and we sit in our office and we wait for people to come to us. We need to bring the help to those out there who cannot help themselves. And also, I've been on the ad hoc committee to re-examine the mental health system in our community, the creation of crisis stabilization units, which is the front line of dealing with people who need help with their mental health issues. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. Steve Ryan. Well, I'm the only candidate here who's known by one name, and uh, this is my alma mater right here. I graduated from Santa Ana College seven times. And uh, as a matter of fact, I, uh, I used to run tech up on the uh, balcony up there, and I've uh, done shows here. One of my ex-professors uh, is still teaching here in criminal justice, Tori Gray. I didn't expect I didn't expect seven degrees from Santa Ana College, but that's the way it worked out. One of them is in uh, law enforcement, and that's the one which uh, George Wright uh, introduced me to, and he later become a president of the department. It's something I had to do. We've gone through the scam in Orange County of uh, what's this snitch scandal, which was totally fabricated. There's only one scandal in, in Orange County, and that's Rakakis and his boys. This is, Orange County has the largest gang that the world has ever known and the most corrupt. And he controlled the Board of Supervisors through his endorsements. He, 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 even, he even controls the Public Defender's Office. He had himself illegally appointed as Public Administrator. And with our wonderful euthanasia law, which is going to start on the 9th of June, you're going to see deaths galore in Orange County. And who's going to decide that? The person who's your guardian. I've been a white collar uh, expert on this uh, for longer than I, I can imagine. Behind the orange curtain tells you what's wrong with Orange County. I had a pathologist come and speak to the Board of Supervisors and, and other city, city halls in Orange County. There is systematic, institutionalized 
murder of citizens in Orange County brought to you by the illegal appointment of Rakakis as public administrator. I was set to run for that office, and I ran for it before, 40,000 votes. He was illegally appointed at the, at the Board of Supervisors. They can't even get the ethics of the committee Two correctly. Minutes. Two minutes, Steve. Okay. Thank you. Just as a reminder, we do have a timekeeper, and each candidate will be given a minute to two minutes for the question, and will be warned when there's 15 seconds left in your time. So uh, please uh, abide by the time. Scale. I'd like to start with Andrew Joe. Uh, the first question is regarding workforce development. The OC supervisors work in partnership with the OC WIB. Key businesses have hundreds of open positions, but cannot find qualified trained workers. In addition, as many industries they have new positions that did not exist five years ago. As supervisor, what is your strategy for the OC WIB to meet the employment needs of the key industries in the road in the OC economy? The first thing I did um, with WIB is we uh, made outreach efforts to the community. We promoted for the first time by sending out mailers directly to people in our district to let them know about the job fair and what the uh, workforce investment board, for those of you who may not be familiar with, with. And that is the agency that tasked with trying to promote business and to encourage employment in our county and to provide training to those people that may need help to transition into a new career or to start their career. And what we did in the last uh, job fair that we did about two weeks ago, through our outreach effort, we had the highest turnout ever. And we also reach out ourselves to contact potential employers to let them know about the job fair. And one minute. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought it was good. Um, and so we have, the, the, the turnout has been great. It was over 1,500 people turned up and over 50 employers. Thank you. Steve, Steve, uh, would you like to have me repeat the question? Yeah. Okay. Regarding workforce development, the OC supervisors work in partnership with the OC web. Key, business, key businesses have hundreds of open positions, but cannot find qualified trained workers. In addition, many industries have new positions that did not exist five years ago. As a supervisor, what is your strategy for the OC web to meet the, the employment needs of these key industries and grow the OC economy? A question like that. To my homework, or at least know what it is. <laughs> so I'm not sure I can answer this question for you. I do know that uh, money at the Board of Supervisors is wasted, like uh, it's nobody's business. Uh, they're going to tear down perfectly good buildings at a cost of $300 billion. They gave the uh, sheriff, hundred, her own personal attorney, $120,000, which only accountable to her. So money is wasted. I'm not sure that the people on the, on the Board of Supervisors know what they're doing. I don't think they're qualified for this. We have an ethics uh, measure on the ballot, which I, I'm not allowed to write a rebuttal. And I came in the day next. So they know how to commit crimes. They know how to fudge things. They know how to uh, make things look wonderful. But in the end, they're unorganized. They're incompetent. And most of all, they're corrupt. Thank you, Steve. Bob? Well, I think, uh, with all respect, I think that uh, the lawyers uh, does not necessarily know how to, uh, you know, attract people uh, uh, for a few jobs. In order to have people come and uh, interested in applying for a certain company or certain, a certain government agency, you need to create an environment where people uh, uh, are proud to work for that and are happy to work for. Uh, in the private industry where I came from, uh, we need to, uh, you know, have an environment where we uh, empower the employee. Uh, we uh, uh, give them the uh, training uh, and the career growth uh, in order to grow their, their career. Uh, if if we do not uh, do that, then I'm sure uh, there will not be a lot of people who are interested in applying for uh, the position and working for the agency or the, or the research that we're working for. So as a supervisor, I will start working on creating environments where we empower and write, uh, give them the tools that they need to, to excel. And uh, with that, then more people will, will join us. Thank you, Paul. Uh, the next question, a one-minute response. Uh, and we're going to start with you, Steve. The 
top two priorities that you will act on as soon as you're elected supervisor and why? The top two priorities, well, those are easy. First of all, Rakakis, when he was illegally appointed as public administrator, has got to go. We voted as a county that, that the public administrator would be elected. His wife used to be the second in command to John Williams, who was forced to uh, retire early. Uh, so he, that has got to finish. Uh, and uh, as far as, uh, as I was said previously, we have a systematic murder of people. We go to a board of supervisors meeting and people will tell you that their family members are being kidnapped, that their, their <laughs> properties are being taken away. Uh, you, you know what? You don't need an ethics committee. What you need is me. What you need is somebody who understands white collar crime, has written a book about it, knows where the bodies are buried, and will go after them. And it's not going to be the register, because the register is works with Rakakis. When Rakakis goes down, so does a few of them as well, even if they even if the business has been sold and rebought. Thank you. Huh? Can you repeat the question, please? The question is, what top two priorities will you act on as soon as you are elected supervisor and why? Number one, I think we should stop West Pool spending. The current supervisor spent a lot of public money, sent out tons of mailers. And one of the mailers uh, trying to organize a free income tax filing for low-income people. And uh, it's, it's open for only two hours in a Friday afternoon from 1 to 3 p.m. With two hours, how many can we serve? Now, I do not know exactly what the cost for that mail is, but I estimate it would cost anywhere between fifteen and $20,000. That assumes that we have less than 100 uh, people who show up, which I heard what the supervisor claimed that many people show up on that day. That's $200 per person that we try to help. So surely, West Coast Civic Spending will be my top priority, and I will stop all of those kind of uh, activities. The second thing I would like to do is I would like to hold uh, our uh, uh, you know, county staff and uh, officials to be uh, transparent. We have to be fair to everyone and not hiding anything. Thank you. The first thing I would tackle would be crime. Property crime has gone up 23% in the past year all across the county. Violent crime has got increased significantly here in Santa Ana. We have to work through our probation department in conjunction with the local police departments in order to supervise more adequately the people that we released early because of AB 109 and, and Prop 47. Secondly, I would continue my work on the homeless front, which has a strong overlap with mental health issues. The coordinator position that I created that was approved by the board and has been funded will reach out and help those people who cannot help themselves by bringing the help to them and for the first time there will be accountability as far as how we spend our mental health dollars. We spend $325 million a year on mental health treatment and we have no way of knowing how much we have accomplished with that money. With the new position that I created, we will be able to accomplish the metrics in order to judge how effective we spend our dollars. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, Andrew, we'll start with you on the next question. The next question is a two-minute question to answer. Um, homeless, recently in the Voice of OC, there was another article outlining the continued exchange between the city of Santa Ana politicians and the OC supervisors. The bars continue to be thrown by both sides. Uh, moving forward, though, a homeless solution is just not a shelter. There are additional services that, need, need, that are needed to help to eliminate the whole, the whole homeless problem. What services do you believe are needed? What is your strategy to eliminate? And can we do that financially within the next 10 years? I will answer the last question first. Yes, we can accomplish it within the next 10 years through the care coordinator position that I created. Right now, the approach we have taken to homelessness is one of silos. We have healthcare agency, social services, housing, veterans affair. We have different departments in the county all working separately and individually without coordinating between themselves as far as any overlapping services that can be provided and can be coordinated so that we can better care 
for homeless individuals. We expect individuals to come to us, all of these departments, individually, to get help. How do we do that? How, do, how can these people do that when they don't have a car, when they don't have the ability to get themselves ready and move to different locations to get help? So therefore, through the use of a coordinator position of the new department that I created, this is a board direct report, meaning th this department would report directly to the board of supervisors, and they are on par with all of the directors of the other departments in the county to coordinate all of the care that we have in the county in order to present to the, the board solutions in order to address the needs that we see with our homeless individuals. With these, cre uh, these new positions, for the first time, as I mentioned, we will be able to measure how effective we have been in helping homeless individuals. By doing what? We go out there, we make contact, and through only one contact, one number, these people and their families can contact the, the county and be available to all of the services that we have. Um, I believe that once we go back and we look at how it's been done, it's one of changing the, the approach that we take to government. We don't sit and wait for business to come to us, we bring the help out to people. Thank you. <coughs> Steve? The very first person who signed my nomination signature for any political uh, job which I uh, elected to run for was a, young, was a man called Red with homes. And I, then I again saw him at the ICU at, at uh, St. Joseph Hospital, and, and he's not around anymore. But I saved a certain percentage of my nomination signatures for the homes, which you can check any time you want. I'm there. During the rains that came, I was there under the Santa Ana Library overhang, waiting there for a couple hours for it to end. Uh, I know the people who are homeless. I know their advocates. I uh, go to uh, Isaiah House all the time. You can ask Dwight Smith and his wife if they know me because they've signed my papers many times. Uh, but you know what? Did you know that the, the uh, Board of Supervisors causes homelessness with the public administrator and the public guardian? They take your home. They take your freedom. They shove a public defender down your throat. They take your house. They take your bank account. All they have to say is you're crazy. My, in my own experience at my, at my home, we've been invaded over half a dozen times. Over half a dozen times. And the chief, and the chief of staff was Rakakis' wife. Hmm? So this is a, they caused homelessness. What's the solution to all that? They need something like what was the YMCA before. You need a lot of rooms, communal cleanliness, uh, someplace safe and someplace here. They bought the bus station for $3 million, and they didn't buy the YMCA. That's no solution to anything. You need to get it here, and you need to get it now, and you need to ask them what they need. And you don't do that by wasting $300 million for buildings you don't even need, and then you, you cry big tears over Karma the dog, or Jasmine the cat, and uh, animal shelters, and you don't care about people. Just, just the money they, they have in their pet that could pay for housing for them. Hmm? But let's start with the YMCA, which is still empty, it's still across the street, and the homeless are still homeless Thanks. where they were before. Thank you. Uh, yes. <clears throat> Needless to say, uh, our homeless uh, issue is growing out of uh, uh, promotion here. And uh, in government role, I represent uh, the city uh, in the uh, homeless task force. Uh, we meet once a month. And I can tell you that uh, it has become, uh, uh, you know, expanding our control here. We, in Gatwick, we had people living in the sewage this, uh, canal. Uh, now, the solution for this cannot start with a saw who, you know, sit in the glass house and uh, think of what makes sense and what not making sense. We need a solution that come from many, many different angles, uh, including housing, uh, mental and psychology help. We had homeless people who refused to be helped. Uh, and we need to have a, uh, engage everyone from the charity group who are on right in the field, in the front line. They know better the situation than, than someone sitting at the desk. When I uh, am your supervisor, I will bring all of this group together and uh, ident identify the issue, uh, brainstorming, uh, what can we do to help. We need a total solution, not just a couple of here and there. I don't think it will work.
Thank you. I'm going to inject a question from the audience. It's a very simple one. It says, what is the biggest difference between you and the other candidates here tonight? I'm going to start with five. I care about our district. The reason that I enter this race is because I do not see anyone else that I believe is qualified to uh, uh, you know, unseat the current uh, supervisor, who I believe is a disaster for our district one. I would like to uh, you know, reduce waste, because as is everywhere I look, there's so much wasteful spending by our, uh, in our district one. Uh, I see public safety uh, being, uh, you know, being reduced with, you know, crime going up. Uh, you know, prison is uh, is uh, is very bad. Uh, even the uh, uh, the deputies uh, have complained that our prison is is out of control. And uh, I would like to uh, get to work, and I hope you guys would uh, give me a chance to uh, turn our district one around. It need to, it deserves to be as good as the other districts. Thank you. Steve. Well, the biggest difference is that uh, nobody cares if the other candidates are, vote, are elected, and they will care if I'm elected. Uh, when I was elected to the Orange Unified School District, it became national news. Uh, the, the status quo, the bureaucracy, got the heebie-jeebies because they thought I would do something. So I was muzzled, I was censured, I was censored, uh, and all those wonderful things because they wouldn't let me get the job done. This time, follow your conscience, because they're going to really, really care if I do get elected, because I will really, really get things done. And I'm not going to care what political party you are, what race you belong to, or religion, or anything else. Because white-collar crime is not good. Gangsterism is not good. People that belong in jail should be in jail. I care, and I'll get the job done. Thank you. Andrew? Experience and track record. That's, I believe, those are the qualities that distinguish me from the other candidates. As a former prosecutor with the Orange County District Attorney's Office, and also as a former chief of staff to a supervisor in the first district, and in the last 14 months, I have the experience to serve in this capacity and will continue to do a good job for District 1. And my track record speaks for itself. As I mentioned earlier, in a short 14 months as a county supervisor, I have been entrusted by my fellow supervisors to be the leadership of many attractable issues that we have faced as a county for many years, such as homelessness, mental health, uh, the uh, public safety, and also the uh, infrastructure for the county. These are issues that are integral to the vitality of our community and also the strength of our economy. And so with my experience and my proven record, I will be a proven leader for uh, Supervisor District 1. Thank you, Andrew. We're going to start the next question off with you, Steve. Um, the county is planning a capital improvement program of over $300 million over the next 10 years. I think you mentioned that in your opening statement. Many of the county buildings and services in dis are in District 1. How will you make sure that after all of construction and consolidation that this will end up being a positive impact on your district? I was there when they decided on this nonsense. And uh, these are relatively new buildings. You know, some of the things in Orange County should not be done, but should be undone, okay? And we have three lawyers that are board on the Board of Supervisors and two ladies, which one of them calls herself normal. And I guess I'm normal too. You know, I have no idea they put these, these things into their mind, but uh, we, we've got, we could have a homeless shelter across the street. There's other buildings that could be renovated. I talked to the employees there uh, afterwards and I said, what do you think about all this stuff, you know? And they said, because I was there and I heard it all, and they said, well, you know, this is a maze and we have to turn on the air conditioners. Well, poor baby, you know? There's 400 people outside that are suffering a lot more than you are. But in, in the long run, you get to hire six people on the Board of Supervisors. I will make sure that they're experts, and I will make sure that every go, everything goes correctly if that's the way it's going to proceed. I'm very good at what I do. Like I said, I have a law enforcement degree. I know how to investigate. And, Thank you, uh, Steve. Uh, could you repeat the question, please? 
Sure. The county is planning a capital improvement program of over $300 million over the next 10 years. Many of the county buildings and services are in the district.